Hey teens, I'm Miss Abby, your teen services librarian for the Slido branches of the San Antonio Parish Library. And today we're going to learn how to make paper high end scents from your April teen tote craft. Before we get started, let's go over our teen totes. We have two teen totes available for our teens for free through the San Antonio Parish Library. One of them is our book tote. So our book tote you register for between the 1st and the 15th of one month to receive between the 1st and the 15th of the following month. That comes uh, with two themes that you choose from at the beginning uh, when you register. So you choose those themes. The theme that you choose is what we pick the books based off of. You'll have two books to check out and then return later to the library, but they're a surprise until you get your bag. So you never know what they are going to be, but it's a great way to try new authors and new genres. And then we also throw in some swag and some snacks and some fun things in that bag. So we've given out shirts, socks, Valentine candy heart uh, with the chocolates in it, all kinds of fun things. We also have our arts and crafts tote. That one comes with two crafts that we advertise so you know what you're getting. You register in the beginning of the, to the end of the first month of one month, receive in the be end of the next month. So you reach it, you re you register between the 15th and the 30th, and you'll receive it the next month between the 15th and the 30th. And again, that one comes with two crafts that you can do at home with fantastic videos and wonderful instructions on how to do them. And we also include fun things in those bags too, like a snack or something fun like a t-shirt as well. Now that we've gone over what the arts and crafts tote is, let's get started on this one. So we need to know first what materials we need to work with. This is a great time if you did not get an arts and crafts tote to look at home and see if you have these materials or go to your favorite arts and crafts store and pick up what you need. Most of this is probably already in your house. All right, so what we need to make our paper high end sense are first some instructions. If you did not get your arts and crafts tote, you do not have these, but you can watch this video and learn how to do it. A pencil. I have a wooden dowel, but anything slender and round, even your pencil would work. It's just a little bit thick. If you can avoid using that, be perfect. Or the end of a paintbrush, something like that. Uh, this is a chopstick. I have a popsicle stick, but that's just to help spread my glue. If you got a coat, uh, your glue is in a little container, so this is to help spread that glue. I have a little ruler. I just printed a little paper one because I didn't have a real one that works just fine. A pair of scissors, not included in your bag. Some green construction paper or other green thin paper. So this is what we're going to be using to make our leaves and our stems, so we need to be able to roll it really well. And then I have some card stock in a couple different colors. This is just a two by eight, um, so two inches wide, eight inches long, same as my green construction paper for the long one, and the small one is two by three. Okay, and we'll go over that again. So if you don't have this at home, you can go ahead and cut what you need to be able to follow along. All right, let's start our paper high incense. All right, to get started, we're going to choose one of our pieces of cardstock. So this is a bit thick of a paper. I wouldn't go more than a 65 pound if you're doing this at home. Um, if you don't know what that means, when you look on your package, it's going to tell you that's the weight and thickness of the paper. Um, you can also use a thin paper if you want to try different ones. That's totally okay, and that is up to you. But I'm going to pick one first. I'm going to go with the purple because I think a purple would be really pretty. And I'm going to take my ruler. And the very first thing I want to mark on my paper is about a quarter inch depth, but I'm going this way. So I'm going to write, I'm going to do a quarter inch off my ruler right here. And then I'm going to come over here and I also want to do a quarter inch. Oh, you know, I think I might have done that a little high. So we're going to go right here. We're going to go a little bit below. So remember that the zero marks the first inch. We don't want to go all the way to the bottom of the ruler. If you got a bag from me, you got one of these paper rulers. 
You're welcome to use your own personal if you would like. But I'm just coming around and I'm going to go in a couple different areas so I can connect my lines in a mostly straight line. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I would like it to be mostly straight. And this is the line I'm cutting to when I make my paper high inset, so I don't cut all the way through my paper. And then I'm going to use my straight edge again, and I'm going to come down and connect my lines very lightly. It doesn't have to be dark. It's just so that I can see where I need to stop. So I've come down my paper lengthwise and created a nice little line and that's just so I know where to cut. Well then on the other side, on the length side, I'm going to take my ruler and now I want to mark every quarter inch, right? So every quarter inch is where I'm going to be cutting. Again, you don't need a whole long line. This is just a nice little feint so that I know where I need to cut. And you won't be able to see any of these markings when we're finished. So I'm going down all the way to the end. So of course I have to move my ruler because I didn't, I don't have an eight inch one. So I'm gonna match up my zero with the last one that I made so that I can make sure that everything is still a quarter of an inch. And again, if it's not completely perfect, that's okay. Petals on flowers aren't always perfect. All right, so I have my markings all made. So I have my long line and then I have my short little dots every quarter inch. And then I'm gonna take my scissors and on every one of those, I'm gonna cut down to that long line that I made. But I'm not gonna go past that line, I'm gonna stop right at that line. And that's so that my petals don't fall off the flower and I have something to roll onto my stem. Okay. So keep you a nice steady hand and we're going to go all the way down this length of paper for every cut. Just like that. So as you can see I have my cut started. I'm going to go ahead and finish this and then I'll be back with a finished cut high end synth. Okay, I went and got myself a little stir straw because I was having trouble with this. Um, one thing we definitely need to remember is as we go, adding a little bit of glue. The glue you have is a very quick dry glue, so you don't want to add a lot at a time. Just a little bit is good, and we're going to do a nice thin layer. So that's what the popsicle stick is for, is to be able to um, smear it out so it's not super thick. So we don't want it squirting out of our flour. All right, and we want to roll it from a diagonal from one of the corners so that when we're done, we'll have a nice long stem. Okay, try to keep it as tight as you can. Here's some of that glue down. Okay. Oh yes, this is much easier to do now that I've added a little straw for myself. And I'm gonna add a little more glue. So some of my popsicle sticks, so I'll use a little bit of that, but I think I need a little, another dollop. Ooh. Okay, much, much better. Okay, so I know I have myself a nice long stem. 
to make sure my corner gets glued down really well too. And this is a quick dry, like I said, so it shouldn't take too long to get it nice and dry. So we're gonna set our stem to the side. So, so far we have our petals and we have our stem. Well, now we also need our leaves. So I'm gonna let my stem dry for a second and I'm gonna do my leaves real quick. So my leaf is the two inch wide by three inch long um, green construction paper. And you can use your ruler to mark this if you want. You don't have to. I'm just going to do it by eyesight. Um, but you want to fold a quarter inch accordion style long ways. Okay. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm going to keep folding it accordion style. So back and forth. Oh, as evenly on possible but you know sometimes some of our leaves are a little bit thicker than others and that's quite all right okay so I have it all folded I got about four folds here okay. there's my my leaf fold and then I'm gonna take my scissors and starting about I'm gonna start at the top and I'm gonna leave about a half inch um, from the bottom untouched because I need to have something to glue with, right? So I'm gonna start cutting my leaf shape. So I'm just going down. And if you think about a high end synth leaf, they're kind of narrow, a little pointy at the end. And I'm gonna leave my half inch together down here so they don't fall apart. So that's one side. I'm gonna do my other. I think I'm gonna start towards the bottom here, but again, leave that half inch. And I'm coming straight up. Okay. So it's gonna kind of look like grass a little bit. And that's what I wanted. This one didn't go down as deep as I need it to, so I'm gonna cut it a little bit more. Eyeball your leaves, see what you like, what you don't like. That's all okay. All right, so now I have my leaves my petals, and my stem. So the next step is to put it all together. So I'm gonna take my high end synth and I'm gonna start wrapping it around my stem. And I wanna start at the narrow end of the stem. So what I'm going to do, and I want to keep it nice and tight, is take my swirl, and I'm going to start at the thinner end. So this end is thinner than this one. And I'm going to go on the back end here, and I'm going to start wrapping. So before I do that, I'm going to put a little bit of glue on my petals on the flat, the bottom end that I didn't cut. And you can kind of use your pencil line for this. Because again, the pencil should be on the back of it. And I'm going to start at the top and I'm going to start wrapping. And I want to keep this a little tight. Okay. And it will dry quickly. So be careful with it. Work quickly. If you need to hold it for a second so we can adhere to the stem, that's okay too. You are working with paper, so sometimes paper can be tricky. Sometimes rolling can be tricky. And of course, the curls are going to get kind of in the way, right? So you want to keep wrapping with the curls right underneath each other. You don't want to have to be fighting the curls. So we're gonna keep wrapping with the curls underneath each other, just like this. Y'all can see a little better. And like my paper, I accidentally cut a little bit. That's okay. Um, it's still kind of hanging by thin, 
uh, by a little bit, but I could glue it back if need be. So I'm gonna do a little more glue on the, down the rest of my flower, and I'm gonna keep going. Again, with my curls underneath each other. I want it to look nice and full, so I'm gonna keep them right under each other and try to keep it against that stem as much as possible. It can be tricky, that's okay. You little get a little glue here or there, that's fine, it should dry clear. Okay. So you have a nice little, little flower. And you can keep, you could spread them out a little more if you feel like you need to. Whatever you'd like it to look like. Make sure you have it glued down well. And then I'm gonna take my leaves, and if you did use your pencil on it, you wanna make sure that the pencil's on the inside. We're gonna go down about two inches from the flower, two or three, and then we're going to start rolling, but we want it at a diagonal. So we're gonna start rolling here from this corner because we don't want the leaves to all be sitting in the right same direction. So once again, I'm gonna take my glue and I'm gonna go at the bottom where we did not cut, the nice little flat end down here. And then I'm going to set my flower in it about two inches below, and I'm gonna start rolling. Okay, and my leaves should start kind of poking out a little differently and look a little more full than if I just had five. Five little leaves. Oops, I pulled mine off before it could dry. It's fine. All right, and there is my little hyacinth. So you can make a whole bouquet of these for mom for Mother's Day, or you could put like a pin in the middle of the construction paper and have a bouquet of pins. Um, you could do a lot of things with these. Have fun with these look on your desk, or on for your mom, it never dies, so Mother's Day is in May, if you're looking for something to do for her. Just a fun little decoration for spring. Thank you for joining me in making our paper hyacinths. Look how pretty that is, I do love my purple. In making our paper hyacinths, and I will see you this summer for teen summer reading. We have lots of crafts and fun all summer long at your St. Timothy Parish Library branches.